Hey guys, welcome to Under the Air Sports. I'm Eric Hobbs. Right now we're going to talk about Mizzou basketball and, uh, well, just recap where we're at, where we're going in terms of watching this team just stumble through the, re through the rest of this season. Before we get begin, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, Instagram, and on X. Leave us a comment, guys. Is Owen 18 realistic in your view for this team? Let us know what you think. All right. So, yeah, that's the question. You know, coming into this week, you're, you're looking at, ooh, home Arkansas, one win. At Vandy. Yes, it's a road game, but they're absolutely atrocious. Good chance to get two wins, get things going. No. Uh, Mizzou fell flat. They got absolutely smashed in the first half against Arkansas. And, uh, well, it it's on the table. 0-18 is on the table. At the end of this, I'll, uh, I'll talk about how likely I think it is. But they don't get there. They win a game. It's luck. Um, and I think the most discouraging thing here is that this team quit. The last four minutes of the first half against Arkansas, they quit. That was clear. Even in the second half when they, the offense picked it up, Arkansas scored repeatedly right at the rim. So I I attribute you know the fact that, that they scored more was more Arkansas not being as intense because the defense still wasn't there. So I don't make a whole lot of, of them scoring whatever they did in the second half. They did they did score a lot more, but that's more on Arkansas not having the intensity. Um you know yeah, this team quit, and that is super discouraging because it's the one thing that you can hang your hat on, ideally. Maybe not anymore. We'll see. Uh, part of the reason for the disappointment is just guys who are just look lost out there. It's not a competitive team. And I think the biggest disappointment has to be Connor Vanover. It is for me, anyway. Uh, in terms, especially among the transfers, you know, at that height, you think you do more. And aside from blocking a shot on accident every now and again, he does he does nothing. He does not score. He has next to zero athleticism. And on defense, it is a combination of a lack of quickness, a lack of athleticism, and honestly, a lack of fundamentals. And, you know, in the Arkansas game, there was a guy at the top of the key who stopped anticipating Vanover, you know, stopping the ball like you're supposed to. Vanover just kind of hung out in the paint. Arkansas do dribble once or twice and then took on a mid-range shot. And so, okay, if you're going to give me this. He was he, he looked confused by Vanover's lack of fundamentals. And... You know, if there, there there's no help defense coming there, he's too slow. At this point, give the minutes to Jordan Butler and Trent Pierce. There's no reason to play Vanover anymore. This season's going nowhere. Get your young guys experience, especially Jordan Butler, who is slowly but surely at least appearing to figure it out. He's not an offensive threat yet, but he's getting there. He's figuring some stuff out. And it's it's an encouraging sign for him. Do this. Let Pierce play. What's it going to hurt? This the season's going nowhere. Like I said. And part of with Vanover doing nothing, Butler still not really an offensive threat yet. Aiden Shaw has regressed offensively. You have Caleb Grill hurt. Tanjay hurt. Jesus Carlo Martin is a liability offensively. Kurt Lewis is not consistent. And these guys are consistently on the floor together. And what you're left with is an offense that's just stagnant, bad spacing, and just not effective at anything. It reminds me of Conzo Ball. It really does. Where, uh, think about this team. If the, score, if the game gets to 75, 
They can't win. That's just the long and short of it. Missouri has to win games the way Conzo's teams had to win games. Ugly. Score in the 60s. And it's not fun basketball. And it's because there's just a lack of cohesion. That You notice on all the broadcasts, they talk about how much dribbling there is. And sometimes it's effective, but man, compared to last year where there was so much passing, guys knew where to go. They anticipated what the play should develop. None of that's there. A big part of that is Nick Honor, Noah Carter. Great role guys. Not cut out, in my opinion, to be the guys. And I said Connor Vanover was the biggest disappointment. Well, I wasn't thinking of these two. This is it. Vanover's the biggest disappointment out of the portal. These two are the biggest disappointment on the team together. Um, you know, just disappear on offense consistently. Um, that's that's all there is to it. They were great when the opposition was really focused on Kobe Brown and Demoy Hodge, but when they are the guys and the focus, they're just not there. They they need those big names to support them. And they need to be the second option. That's that's how they can be effective. Frankly, I, I blame Dennis Gates. He should have realized this. He should have recognized, you know what? These dudes, they need to be a second option or have a, a stronger supporting cast. And whether that's fail, failure to recognize that or failure to attract anybody else in the portal, either way, it's on Gates. Caleb Grill being out really crippled this team. He was kind of the junkyard dog of this team, the hard-nosed guy. They don't have anyone like that on this team, a spark plug. And, and it does hurt. In this game where Missouri was almost kind of sort of trying to make a run, a guy like Grill could really make that feel like a legitimate run instead of Missouri just happened to score five or six straight points, which is really what it feels like. I don't, I think he should sit the rest of the season because if I'm not mistaken, if he sits the rest of the season, he'd be eligible for a medical red shirt. I don't expect that to happen, but if I were him, I would consider it. This year's going nowhere. What's the point? Unless he's just ready to be done with college and try to, either try to play professionally in Europe or overseas somewhere, or if he's just ready to be done with school, regardless of what happens. And that may be, and that's fair enough. But if he wants to have an effective final season, why not? That's what John Tanjay is doing. Um, yeah, all this to say the team is terrible. And Vandy seems like the last legitimate shot at a win left on the schedule. What is it, 10 games left after Arkansas? Vandy? Maybe they'll be favored by one or two. In Nashville, you know, the goofy gym setup, all that makes things weird and challenging. You can't hold your breath for a win there. Say they drop that. Find me a win on the schedule. All that's, that said, I'm inclined to think they'll win one because 0-18 is hard to do. You're bound to run into a team that just can't throw it in the ocean on a given night. Missouri, I don't think, is talented enough to have a night where they just can't miss, seemingly, where they shoot 60% from three. They're not good enough for that. They just aren't. Um, no, yeah, Missouri has, they have to play defense at a level where a team just has a bad night and they get the rebounds. Don't give up second chance, easy putbacks. You would think that happened. Well, of averages 18 games, right? But I don't know. I think that is Missouri's best chance to win. Not anything to do with talent. They don't have it. Aside from Vandy, that's it. Talent-wise, they'll lose every other game. 
that's it. That's, that's all there is with Mizzou basketball right now. But Mizzou fans, spring football, not too far away. And hey, St. Louis City SC is coming back soon. Spring training for the Cardinals is coming. Blues are at the all-star break. And, you know, despite the Columbus loss, showing signs of life. So we'll see what happens there. The Battlehawks, also not that far away. UFL. We'll keep you covered with all of that going on in the world of St. Louis sports. Until then, thank you for watching.